mess with fireworks. Remember, all fireworks are illegal in Los Angeles. Celebrate safely by following the rules. In Los Angeles, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Fire officials say it's best to leave it to the professionals. For a listing of fireworks shows, visit LAFD.org or MySafeLA.org. Well, some volunteers want to help children. Others want to save the environment. Whatever your passion, a new web portal launched by the mayor's office will help you find it. Gil Reyes has more from the Getty House. Gil. Well, Yana, here it is, summer vacation. A lot of young people with little or nothing to do. Why not volunteer? If not for other people, then do it for yourself. You'll feel better. And now there's a new app that makes it easier. Over at the mayor's house, this group has found their perfect volunteer opportunity. They're writing letters of encouragement to students of School on Wheels tutoring program for homeless kids, a service they're passionate about. But for others, finding the right program to dedicate their time may be hard to do. So we're launching this new portal, this new website, Volunteer LA, that will help people connect with the type of volunteering they like to do, somewhere close to where they live or work, in the issue that means a lot to them. Mayor Eric Garcetti and his wife, Amy Elaine Wakeland, are calling on Angelinos to check out the Volunteer LA portal. It hooks you up to nonprofits benefiting students, homeless individuals, the environment, and so much more, as well as municipal agencies from the LA Zoo to city and county libraries. People can do things out of their own home. They can do things by themselves independently. They can do it with other people if that's what they like. Indoors, outdoors, active, not as active. I mean, we have all these options and filters now. So you can say where you live, what you're passionate about, and we'll find you something you can do. The Garcettis made the announcement at their home, Getty House, where they welcomed hundreds of volunteers who volunteer because it makes them feel good. A lot of you, I think, are probably very active. This is a tool for you to be able to do outreach with fellow congregants at your houses of worship and with your neighbors about how they too can get involved. Get started by checking out the website at volunteer.lamayor.org. I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. The mayor's office has also launched its Office of Volunteer Engagement to inspire citizen engagement and improve communities. The L.A. Department of Water and Power officials are looking to kids to help solve the problem of water conservation and create a brighter, greener future for all Angelinos. Anna Marcos joins us to tell us what the Bucket Brigade is all about. Anna. Yana, these kids at Walter Reed Middle School are part of the Bucket Brigade, and city leaders hope they change the future of water conservation. It all starts with a bucket. It may just be a drop in the bucket, but that drop, when there's many buckets, can sure add up. Why waste it when you could use it for something else? If everybody saves a bucket or two of water a day, whether you're warming up the water in the shower or the dishes or something in the sink, all that adds up. As part of the Bucket Brigade, these kids will be taking their buckets home. It's a joint effort by LADWP, city leaders, and the LA Unified School District to get students to teach their parents and each other about water conservation and to practice it every day. So what will they do with their buckets? For me, I definitely do wait for the shower to warm up. And so that water that's going down the drain, I'm probably going to use this bucket. And me and my dad do like to grow tomato plants, so we're probably going to use this water to water our plants. I'm going uh, to put it under my sink when maybe when I'm brushing my teeth. My family, we already save a lot of water at home. And we have a leaky bathtub, and we already have a bunch of buckets underneath there. I think we're going to add one more bucket there. I could use it again for a car wash. The budding environmentalists are part of the school's Environmental Science Academy, which teaches water and energy conservation. Recently, the kids won a $60,000 grand prize in the Save the Drop Drought Awareness Contest. They love telling their parents, you know, turn the faucet off, let's use a bucket to wash our dishes, take a shorter shower. <laughs> our parents will tell us that their kids are letting them know. The LA Unified School District itself has partnered with the Department of Water and Power, saving almost a billion gallons of water in the last few years by installing smart irrigation systems and using recycled water. And apparently even city leaders are getting into the conservation habit. 
I already use a bucket. I use a bucket bigger than this, actually. <laughs> the amount of clean drinking water that would otherwise go down the drain as you're waiting for water to heat up, for example, in the shower or when I'm getting ready to shave or whatever, is all water that can be used. And every morning I do that. So if you feel your own conservation kick coming on, just grab a bucket and start saving. I'm Anna Margos for LA This Week. Bucket Brigade buckets are available to any neighborhood councils that want to hand them out to students in their schools. For more information, call the LADWP at 213-367-1361. Well, there's a new kid on the block when it comes to Valley public transportation, and it just might get Valley residents out of their cars. Anna Marcos fills us in on the new Warner Center shuttle. The Valley has a new anti-traffic weapon, and city leaders are hopping on for the maiden voyage, hoping it will be another reason for Valley drivers to dump the pump, the gas pump, that is. And what's not to like about the new Warner Center shuttle? It helps beat the traffic blues, it operates 24 hours a day, and it comes every 10 minutes. It will be much easier to directly access more Warner Center jobs, shopping, dining, and entertainment venues with this shuttle service. The shuttle service will connect riders to some of the biggest economic hubs in the Warner Center area, including the Warner Center Corporate Park, Westfield Topanga, the New Village, and Kaiser Permanente. It will also provide better connections to the Orange Line. Many say it's the beginning of a whole new revitalization in this part of the valley. It's all about this vision of live, work, and play. That's the vision of growing the density in the Warner Center to protect a single family home, but to create this environment of live, work, and play. But you can't do that if you don't have things like this shuttle. You can't miss it. You'll be able to recognize the Warner Center shuttle by its colorful motif and its wraparound buses. San Fernando Valley, which always had a reputation as being, you know, single family home, very car centric. The truth of the matter was that if you provided high quality transit, people in the valley will use it. And the Orange Line showed that. And there's more changes in store. The Orange Line will now also run 24 hours a day, every 10 minutes. Other bus lines are also getting improved, and plans are still revving up to electrify the Orange Line by 2020. Just some of the changes keeping the valley on the move without the traffic congestion. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. Valley business leaders say the opening of the Orange Line in 2005 has led to economic growth in the valley and they hope the trend continues. It's a competition that builds confidence and self-esteem and with LA hosting the 2028 Paralympics, there may be some athletes in the making. Rasha Goel has more. A lot of people just think, oh, they're in wheelchairs, you baby a person in a wheelchair, you know, you feel bad for them, but we can do a lot of things and this is very competitive, the higher levels. Danny Maravilla from Compton is among the many who's participating at the fourth annual Angel City Games, Southern California's premier adaptive sports competition. A professional basketball player in France, he's here to give back and compete. Sports has given him a way to connect with others. Basketball has given me the opportunity to interact with friends and, and talk about sports, not just, you know, because it's very hard to relate to people. The competition is open to people of all ages. Basically, athletes get a chance to train and compete over the four-day event held at UCLA. It gives individuals a chance to meet others with disabilities while exploring their athletic interests and abilities. We do clinics and competitions in track and field, swimming, archery, wheelchair tennis, and wheelchair basketball. It's because you're socially isolated and tend to be that only kid or adult at your company with a disability. You come here and this is a place where you belong. This is your community, right? People that maybe don't have exactly your experience, but a very similar experience. And so that's really helpful to sort of gather the, the self-confidence and the courage to go attack the world that isn't always that accepting. What's exciting about the Angel City Games is it's not only open to Angelinos, but people from all across the United States come to participate. And this year, there are 30 Paralympian coaches that have come to help out with the clinics. 
11-year-old Elizabeth Keene, who came from Oregon, is participating for the second time in track and field. I enjoy the most because uh, uh, I get to compete with my friends and meet other people. It's important for us because she gets to go out and compete. She gets to go out and get physical exercise. She also gets to go out and work really hard with what she does. Brent Poppin, Paralympian in wheelchair tennis and wheelchair rugby, is helping coach at the clinics. He says it's a great place for parents to see how interested their kids are in the sports, as many of the mobility aids can be quite costly to purchase. The tennis chairs could be between $3,000 to $5,000. The racing chairs are in that same ballpark. So it's sometimes it's hard for a parent to justify spending that money when they don't know if their kid's going to really love that sport. So when they get a games like this, which is a unique place, they get to try everything without spending that money and then go, you know, my kid really loved, he hasn't stopped talking about tennis in two weeks or two months, so we're going to buy him a chair. Truly an inspiration to see these individuals turn their disability into their strength. At UCLA, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Angel City Games is open to all athletes from the U.S. and abroad of all skill levels who have physical or visual impairments. The event was co-sponsored by the city's Department on Disability. Next to Dodger Stadium is a somewhat forgotten military memorial. Established just after World War I, it's slowly being restored to its former glory. And as Gil Reyes reports, with old glory flying high once again. A section of Elysian Park dedicated to World War I veterans takes another big step towards restoration. After several years broken, the flagpole at Victory Memorial Grove is finally fixed. The grove, located west of Dodger Stadium, had fallen into disrepair. Stones and markers and masonry that once was here had been vandalized or neglected over the last several decades. So there is a concentrated effort to, to uh, renovate and reestablish this. Councilman Mitch O'Farrell and others at the flagpole dedication can't remember the last time the Stars and Stripes flew high here. The repair was made in time for Flag Day with help from fundraising, volunteers and the Department of Recreation and Parks. Last year, the nearby Victory Grove Memorial Monument with names of World War I veterans was also refurbished. Cortland Jindra from the World War I Centennial Task Force and his girlfriend have pushed for restorations over the past two and a half years. Technically, probably our first date was trying to find this place. We drove all around, we drove all around uh, Elysian Park and uh, we finally found it and we you know walked up to the hill and found the uh, the monument up top um, and uh, so then it became kind of a passion project for us to try to restore the, the park. Next up restoring the Victory Grove Memorial Garden replanting is expected to take place this fall. In Elysian Park I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. The Citizens Committee to Save Elysian Park, American Legion Post 43, and the Daughters of the American Revolution also helped with restorations. The mayor launches a new program to repair city streets. Councilmember Jose Huizar kicks off a new community event, and the world's largest swim lesson teaches kids how to stay safe in the water. All these stories in City B. LA Mayor Eric Garcetti launched Complete Streets, a first-of-its-kind program to repair streets and install safety measures across Los Angeles. The first of six projects will begin on a two-mile stretch of Roscoe Boulevard from Woodman Avenue to the 405 Freeway in Van Nuys. Council District 14 and Councilmember Jose Huizar kicked off their first Food Truck Tuesday at Graham Park with lots of unique eats, picnic tables, and 80s music. Huizar said the plan is to put on the event every month in an effort to bring the community together. People congregate, get to know one another, enjoy some good food, and that's a great, uh, Anthony Bourdain would say, is that a great way to get to know a person is over a meal. So that's what we're doing here. Everyone's welcome, and um, here's to food trucks. Kids had fun learning how to swim at the Hanson Dam Aquatic Center recently, as the Department of Rec and Parks hosted the world's largest swim lesson. It was a promotional event designed to build awareness and generate local and national press attention about the vital importance of teaching youth swimming skills to prevent drowning. To date, 27 countries have joined this initiative. 
It's Bohemian Rhapsody in North Hollywood with free live music under the stars. Rock on with neighbors, friends, and new friends at NoHo Summer Nights. Gil Reyes has a preview. We will, we will rock you. Saturdays, on this night, it's Queen tribute band Queen Nation. NoHo Summer Nights are back. It's a wonderful evening, it's fun, it's enjoyable, and you know, what better way to spend an evening than to under the stars listening to good music. The Saturday night concerts take place at North Hollywood Park till August 4th. They're sponsored by the Valley Cultural Center and Councilman Paul Krikori. This gives people an opportunity to hear some great music and to enjoy a free concert, but it also gives them an opportunity to come together with their neighbors, meet people that they might not have otherwise met, uh, and bring an activity level and an energy level to the park and to the neighborhood that we wouldn't have without this series. Sure, yeah, we have this park space. Why not make use of it with events like this? Down beside your red light. Are you gonna let it all hang out? Flat bottom girls, you make the rockin' world go round. We'll see you Saturday. The show starts at 7 p.m. At North Hollywood Park, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Coming soon, an Elvis tribute band on July 14th. Also, another group covering rock legend Santana on August 4th. Check out the Saturday night lineup at paulkrikorian.org. We'll spice up your weekend during a salsa festival. Latin jazz takes center stage in North Hollywood and enjoy classic Shakespeare by the sea. All this in this week's Things to Do. The Salsa Festival is coming to Pershing Square in downtown L.A. this summer. Spend the weekend living it up with your friends and family in a fun cultural event. You'll find tons of delicious salsas to sample in the salsa tasting tent, along with local food vendors offering up their best selections throughout the festival. Live music, dancing, and delicious food makes the Salsa Fest the perfect place to spend a summer afternoon. Spice up your weekend on July 7th and 8th at Pershing Square. Playing lively Afro-Cuban salsa and Latin jazz, electric violinist and vocalist Susie Hansen has been a favorite in L.A. for 25 years. This band is truly a crowd pleaser with its rhythmic energy and drive. See them live during NoHo Summer Nights on Saturday, July 7th at North Hollywood Recreation Park. If you're looking for quality family entertainment, Shakespeare by the Sea's free performances can't be beat. Pack a picnic, a blanket, and beach chair. Gather loved ones and settle in under the stars for a night of classic entertainment. The tales are timeless, the admission ticketless, and the experience priceless. Shakespeare by the Sea's The Winter's Tale takes place on Saturday, July 7th. For more, visit shakespearebythesea.org. And that's a look at some things to do. That's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane from all of us here at LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.
single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. You can't control where the ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Don't hurt me this way. Don't touch me this way. When a physical encounter occurs between man and machine, the machine always wins. Please, don't lose. Obey all the rules of the road. Don't let me make the same mistake again. Don't worry, Patty. This isn't going to hurt me one bit. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Shapiro in beautiful Encino, and you're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel. Open wide.
Okay, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Today is uh, July, Tuesday, July 3rd. Shh. Please take a seat. Again, today is Tuesday, July 3rd. want to welcome you to City Hall, City Council. This council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Madam Clerk, we do have a quorum. Would you call the roll? Blumenfield, Bonin, Buscana, Cedillo, Englander, Harris Dawson, Weezer, Caretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Rue, Wesson, 11 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, uh, first order of business. Approval of the minutes. Price moves, uh, Rue seconds, next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Uh, Weezer moves, Harris Dawson seconds. That brings us where? Mr. President, today is Tuesday and time for the flag salute. Okay, could all please rise for our flag salute. Mr. Bonin, why don't you lead us today in our flag salute? Uh, if everybody could please join me in placing their hand over their heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Bonin. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, why don't we run through the agenda? Mr. President, given the upcoming recess, would you like to send all items forthwith today? Yes, I would. Additionally, the Department of Building and Safety requests that item 1A, that the lien amount be reduced to $1,439.61 as the lien has been partially paid. Additionally, the Department requests that items 1B, D, E, and F be continued for 30 days to August 3rd, and that the lien amount for 1B be reduced to $315.53, and the lien amount for 1E be reduced to $455.25. Okay, so without objection, uh, that will be the order. Mr. City Attorney? Uh, yes, and I'd like to uh, note some typographical errors on the case numbers on item 10 and 11. The case number for item 10 should be CPC, dash 2016 dash 2595 and then the rest is correct on item 11 the correct case number should be cpc 2016 dash 422 dash sn and then the rest thank you for that clarification okay uh, madam clerk continue items one and two are items noticed for public hearing you have cards Yes, there are cards on both items. Okay, then why don't we continue? Items 3 through 122 are items for which public hearings have been held. The Plum Committee reports for items 10 and 11 have been submitted and circulated for Council's consideration. Additionally, please note that no action is required on items 25, 55, 64, and 65 inasmuch as Council is considering these matters on items 16, 35, 22, and 17, respectively. Additionally, there are requests to hold items 9, 14, 15, and 61 on the desk, and one additional item that 49 be received and filed inasmuch as council previously took action under council file number 180562. Okay, just let me verify that. So you're, we're holding Items 9 and 15, could you add 122 to that? Also 14 and 61. All right, so let's vote on the remit. Mr. Wezar. Can we uh, hold uh, 62, please? 62. Members, any other requests? Mr. Harris Dawson. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, we're asking that 33 through 39, 50, 55 and 156 be held. Could you repeat that? 33 through 39, 50, 55, and 156. Madam Clerk, you got that? All right, then let's vote on the remaining items. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 eyes. That brings us where? 
Mr. President, that takes us to items 123 through 157, which are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those items are now before this body. You have cards on these items? Yes, there are cards on all items. Okay, then let us continue. Items 158 and 159 are items scheduled for closed session. Would you like to hold those on the desk? Uh, Mr. City Attorney. I believe unless uh, any members have questions, we can address those items uh, in open session. Okay, well, why don't we deal with those items, if you could read them, Madam Clerk. For item 158, in the case entitled Violet Ramirez et al. versus the City of Los Angeles, there is a recommendation to reject the plaintiff's offer of settlement. For item 159, in the case entitled Valame Owens versus the City, there is a recommendation to expend up to $112,500 in settlement. All right, let's prepare to vote. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. That brings us where? Mr. President, that takes council back to presentations, items called special or general public comment. All right. Let's bring up Mr. Previn on my screen. Uh, first, I want to recognize the city attorney. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So uh, two items um, that the speakers may want to comment on. Item 61, there's going to be an amending motion. Um, it's a resolution. I will just read into the record what the moving clause of the resolution is. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved with the concurrence of the mayor that by the adoption of this resolution, the city of Los Angeles supports the Los Angeles Flood Control District's proposed safe, clean water program and the related elements and parcel tax pending before the county board of supervisors for placement on the November 6, 2018 general election ballot inasmuch as the measure needs to support stormwater management, water quality, and water supply objectives which improve the quality of life of the city's residents. Um, and additionally, there will be a substitute motion, I understand, introduced on item 140, but it's in technical in nature, just addressing which funds, uh, which accounts various funds will come from. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Previn, you have items uh, two, one, items one, 123, 24, 25, 28, 29, 130, 132, 133, 136, 139, 141, 142, 145, 154. Uh, thank you, sir. This is not confusing at all, by the way. The alcoholic beverages are, are fantastic. Let's try to get those uh, public necessity licenses out the door as quick as possible, sir, especially in light of the holiday coming up. But let's also be safe. Come on. No texting while driving. And thanks to Atlas Capital Group, the folks who sold us the parking lot at the county for the, uh, the jail. Now, um, item number, obviously what we don't want to do is approve the uh, case file 170899 because that's three million to Godefroy. And Godefroy had never been one block from his house, which doesn't ring true when we finally got the transcript late in the game. Now, in terms of the authorizing the Office of Finance here to deal with the state on a franchise tax board, kind of a a minding, melding of the minds, no thanks. Blumenfield, step up and protect the tag. We don't want that kind of interface. We got enough problems getting you all to be fair about the way you administrate the TOT. So no colluding on that, please, if you don't mind. Now, I'm 140, I have to say, Blumenfield, appreciate that you're reaching in the direction of hope. But to call it a pilot program, it's an old program, and it involves a bulldozer. So thanks to Mr. Bonin for getting arrested, but we do have to do a little bit more uh, in that regard. Now, Coretz has got uh, a couple of doozies from Bel Air Beverly Crest. That's Nikki Miner's group who blamed the Skirball fire uh, on a homeless person without any evidence whatsoever, which is just astonishing. It wasn't Nikki who did it herself. She was the witness who said there must have been people down in there and nobody could pin it on anyone. So it was pretty, pretty awful. Now the 350,000 for the new chief of police, I don't think anybody has a problem with because he's got a very, very big job. Uh, the settlements that you rejected today, holding the line, reflect that you also have the county, count, I mean, not the county council, but the uh, outside council reports today, both one year on top of another wedged in to a 160-item 
uh, agenda, are you trying to tell us something, sir? I don't think you really want to hear how it's going, because it's not going well at all, as the Emily Alpha Ray's article uh, with Cindy Chang in the, New York, in the LA Times uh, revealed, 200 plus million dollars in liability. Outrageous. Now, in terms of safe parking LA, I know we're working on it. The problem has been that uh, people are not opting in so much. They're happy to take a little bit of uh, contribution from the H initiative or whatever, but they're not opting in. So we heard you down here last week and you were making a very compelling case, but we need some of the business uh, helpers to, with large parking structures, to earmark a small portion of them to get some of this stuff going, I think. I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe you feel differently about it. Um, and to wrap it up, I would just simply say that when we put uh, liability payouts on an agenda like this and FOBL announces it at the very end and nobody can ever really get a chance to understand we're not doing the public a service. We should fight those battles out in the open. And I think then uh, we would have a, a better chance of reducing that punishing $200 million liability. And as we head into the Declaration of Independence, I'll just simply say, and I know I have a public comment, but I want to say thanks for, uh, you know, those who have stood up and uh, spoken out because that's what it's all about. And to get arrested for doing it is a little weird, but I suppose he wanted to get arrested. But I think you can still be able to do it and not get arrested. Let's I give know him we toy with minute. that all over the place. Thank you. So in the final one minute, um, I will say that over at the county right now, as we speak, Hilda Solis is banging the drum on a ban uh, in the unincorporated area of you know, marijuana. Now, you're over here night and day trying to get it worked out, and they're delaying and delaying and studying and studying. They're also studying the body-worn camps, which, as you recall, Englander uh, choked down on behalf of the city about a year plus ago and never got the $8 million rebate that we're entitled to, sir. So as I, as I close today, I do want you to step forward, connect with Mr. Englander, who will connect through public safety to the group called Axon, doing business as Taser, and they will uh, earmark, because they're the guys who make the cameras, they will push forward a refund to the city of Los Angeles for $6 million, sir, and you can use it in your homeless initiative. And then the 4,400 Tasers that we won't be using on homeless people that you did get stuck in the back of that truck uh, can be dispensed with appropriately. So thank you for your time, and have a good day. Okay, Mr. Spindler, come forward. Okay, all of the items that you put cards in on uh, have already, the public comment has already been satisfied, except for item 61. Then when we go into the special and general public comment, so let's give him a minute now, Madam Clerk, on 61, and then he can go into his general public comment. I go ahead. I signed up on the other items, one, two, all Mr. of the items. Mr. All uh, the items I signed up on. We, uh, every item that I have. I signed up on all of them, every item I signed up for. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll let you speak on those. Give him his. Three minutes. And I can't recall. Can you please tell yeah, you me can the items to I one two sixty one? Start his time. Go right. ahead. Well, can you please first tell me what items I'm signed up for? One. Stop the time. You're running. No, my time. no, no. But you should know what you signed I, up I, on, I, Mr. Spindler. I, you can sit I, down. Yeah. You can sit okay, down right I now. Now, here. no, Mr. Mr. Spindler, Mr. Spindler. I'm not going to talk to you again. You signed up. I told you what you could speak on, what you can't, so, you know. Right. All right. So, we just going to ride the meeting on number one. Fuck the liens. No more motherfucking liens on people's properties. I don't want no more emancipation reparations for the 
fools that are trying to lose their properties under the liens of the devil council people. When you're living in your house, you're living on the plantation because you cannot be in your house without okay, a goddamn Okay, let's stop this lien. time for a second. Okay, Mr. Spindler, you have one minute left on item 61 in your general public comment. So give him one minute, right. Madam Keep Clerk. Keep violating the round act. That's right. One minute. Well, that's right. Keep on violating the law so I can add Speak more to Speak on lawsuit. 61. 61 is bullshit. And I'm just here to oppose this ridiculous fucking thing known as the six and the one. It ain't the one six, motherfucker. It's the six one that I'm against. I'm not against the four one. I'm against the 61. If I was against the 49, I'd be in favor of the 43, but I'm against okay, that. Okay, this is not really one minute. Hard. I'm Give him his one minute for general Steve public Rose. comment. Okay, go on, Mr. That's Spiller. what I'm talking about. Now, you see how this motherfucker up here and all these other motherfuckers violate your Brown Act. Government Code Section 54950. 169 items on this agenda. They don't even have agendas in the back for niggas like myself. And we come here slaves. But I want to be emancipated. I want restitution damages. I want my acre of land and my mule. I don't want a sidewalk. I want a bed and a roof over my head. I want to live where folks are free. You know why I was, fool? I was in Santa Clarita, fool, where they treat me like a man. But when I'm here, I treat it like a slave. And I'm tired. Emancipate Korea. Resign from this council and liberate all these motherfuckers from you. Thank you. Okay. Antonia. Where are you? Come forward. You have items 1, 123, 124, 125, through 135, general public comment, come on. Can I do my public comment first, please? Go ahead. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. As you see, I have my shopping cart back here. Um, my shopping cart broken. Somebody was nice enough to give me a shopping cart from the market. Again, public safety has failed. The city attorney, Michael okay. Fior, the piss I, I, I think we should move on to the agenda failed. items. Get, get on the agenda Stop item, Ms. Ramirez. No, you're on your three minutes for the agenda items, which you signed up for 1, 123 through 135. No, you know we don't do it that way. So you have 30 seconds left on your general public comment. Just 30 seconds. For what? My public comments? Yes. Again, public safety has failed. No funding for the city of Los Angeles. No funding because they don't deserve it. We've all been attacked, beaten, and robbed, even as homeless people who are standing for the rule of law. That's why we carry this, because all the ass slickers are too busy making millions, sucking our blood and our money and putting us on the streets. God bless America and Donald Trump. Okay, now That's go to the items. Go slickers. to the items, Ms. Ramirez. What number are we on now? No, it's whatever. You put the items down. You select the ones you want to speak to. Thank you very much. I'll speak on uh, 61, please. Um, thank you very much. One moment, please. 61, again, ladies and gentlemen. There are many good people on the streets that are victims of crime, and there's no one who can help victims of crime get grants, funding, or even to buy a shopping cart. We have to beg like dogs to the gangbangers to get us a shopping cart from the market. That's not right. Victims of crime have to get grants to help them Mr. Out President, this is simply not related to any of the agenda on, items. You're not on 61, Ms. Ramirez. Okay. Ms. Ramirez... Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. 
is at 63. Thank so you, Mr. Ms. President. Ramirez, your time. Okay. Ms. Ramirez, sergeants, please, your time's expired. Ms. Ramirez, you have to stay on the subject. Her time's expired now. I've warned her four times. Okay, let's uh, vote on some items, Madam Clerk. Let's vote on items 124, 125, 126, 127, and 130. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 eyes. Now let's vote on items 131, 132, 133, 134, and 135. Please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 eyes. Now we'll vote on items 136 and items 137. Please open up the roll, close it, tabulate the vote. 12 eyes. Mr. Koretz, Mr. Koretz, you ready with your presentation? Then the floor is yours. Good morning, colleagues. I'm proud to stand here again this year to honor and recognize our very own Los Angeles-based International Criminal Court Alliance. This organization advocates for U.S. participation in the International Criminal Court. We've been putting on programs for the better part of two decades. In fact, when our own mayor, Eric Garcetti, was teaching at Occidental College, he worked with ICC in many ways including sponsoring a program to bring a former Nuremberg prosecutor to Occidental. When he became a council member, he sponsored this resolution, and we have kept it going since then, and I believe our mayor continues to serve as an advisor to the International Criminal Court Alliance. However, this year is particularly special as we mark the 20th anniversary of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. On July 17, 1998, the statute established the first permanent treaty-based international tribunal to investigate, prosecute, and try individuals committed, uh, accused of committing the most serious crimes of concern to the international community as a whole, namely the crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and the crime of aggression. We don't usually think of international justice on a city level but attaining that level of peace truly comes down to the individual, the advocate, and that's what makes our government institutions efficient and energetic. Truly representative democracy relies on institutions like the International Criminal Court Alliance to educate not only our government, but the citizens that we serve to represent. Despite the mantra of after World War II of never again, Genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity do continue to this date in many parts of the world. It is without a doubt that the ICC is an important means through which holding individuals accountable moves us closer to the goal of never again. With 11 investigations, 25 cases, 9 convictions, 1 acquittal, reparation orders, 4 ongoing trials, and some 14,000 victims, having participated in the proceedings, we can see clearly the importance of the court's mandate and achievements. As the city of Los Angeles is home to many people who have escaped genocides, countries ravaged by crime, and now live in a country with the rule of law, accountability, and justice, we have the ability to increase positive cooperation with the ICC 
in order to help bring that same standard of accountability to the international stage. U.S. cooperation with the ICC might have prevented thousands of forced migrations and involuntary displacements. So if not to our country, to our constituents, we have an obligation to remedy those heinous crimes. It's high time we helped end our long past of limited American participation and contribute to the makings of peace rather than simply observing it on the sidelines. It's high time we quit being a bystander and build sustainable peace in our often tumultuous, tumultuous international community. And the first step is in doing so is by recognizing and invigorating this organization at the city level. Therefore, we resolve today to formally express our wholehearted support for the International Criminal Court and proclaim July 17, 2018 to be World Day for International Justice. We thank you for making our great city a center for international advocacy, and thank you for all you do to not only improve this city, but the world. And now I'd like to introduce Sean Butler, president of the International Criminal Court Alliance, to speak to us. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, council members, for your attention and for your support, your continuing support over a number of years. Four brief points that I'd like to make. First, July 17, 1998, the vote approving the Rome Treaty was a vote to give credence to, to make material the promise of never again. Despite what we said at the end of World War II, these crimes continue into the 21st century. It's not a relic of the 20th century. It continues to happen today. The second point is that the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court is complementary to national jurisdictions, which means the court promotes national jurisdictions first if there's a genuine, a court that's able and genuinely willing to prosecute. The third point is that within the city of Los Angeles, we have families of survivors of the Armenian genocide, of the Holocaust, of the Rwandan genocide, of the ethnic cleansing in Sudan, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Congo, and Uganda, and in many other places, and so that those are your constituents. By honoring the ICC, you honor your constituents. The last point that I want to make is that the International Criminal Court is a treaty-based organization that has no police force of its own. It relies on the cooperation of national authorities to be able to give effect to its orders and to take custody of people. That's why the the, the support of every country is so important and the support of local communities to show that the nation should be supporting the International Criminal Court is vital. It's important. What you've done here today isn't just an honor to us, and we're thankful for it, but it's honoring all the victims. It's honoring everyone and saying, we need to do something to end genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. And that's what you've done by making this support today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So my, it's my honor to present uh, this resolution in recognition of World Day for International Justice here in the city of Los Angeles. Again, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Koretz. Mr. Wiesar, you want to take up item 62? Yes, please. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And colleagues, what's before us here is an item that would allow us to move forward with the demolition of Parker Center and to move forward with the procurement of a P3 model to build a necessary office tower there that would provide much uh, needed office space. But really what this represents is a step forward in phase one of our new Civic Center Master Plan. Back uh, when our city staff asked us to move forward with the demolition of Parker Center, I asked what we were thinking holistically for the area. And so I, we directed them to come back with a Civic Center Master Plan 
And what we have before us is something that I think will take Los Angeles into a new way of thinking about what civic centers uh, do and their purpose. The new Civic Center Master Plan will not only uh, provide us with much needed uh, office space, but it will create efficiencies by, by bringing other employees from throughout the region here at one location and allow us to get out, get out of long-term leases and possibly sell some buildings we own so that we save money in the process and not pay these uh, high rental fees and also we could uh, realize some savings from the sale of property that we don't use efficiently. But secondly, it would allow a 24-7 civic center where we will build more retail, more housing around the civic center so that at nighttime it's not just dead space. Many civic centers are built in such a way so that people are there during the day but at nighttime uh, there's no one walking around, there's no activity. With new retail, uh, new people, uh, people living here, uh, it would create a 24-7 civic center area. And finally, and one of the most important items uh, for this Civic Center is that it would allow us to reconnect with the emerging downtown. Downtown has been revitalized and we need to reconnect with it in many new ways. But particularly, we need to reconnect with Little Tokyo. There's a history of how this Civic Center area was built. We took properties from Japanese Americans who had just come back from internment camps. We built Parker Center, and we have to just uh, um, correct that wrong. I want to thank all the members from the Little Tokyo community who are here today. Thank you for coming out. They've been strong proponents of this because they recognize not only that we have to correct that historical wrong, but also the way the new uh, city civic center area had been built, it turned its back on Little Tokyo. The new Civic Center Master Plan will have parcels, green space, and areas that we could connect to Little Tokyo and correct the wrong by saying, we understand we did that wrong, but now we're going to connect, connect our main area of Los Angeles, our Civic Center, our government center, with Little Tokyo, something that should have been done a long time ago. So thank you for your support, and I want to thank all the um, members of the ITGS committee, the Budget and Finance Community, the Municipal Facilities Committees uh, for seeing this through. Uh, this is step one in a Civic Center Master Plan implementation that will last 15 years. I don't know how many of you will be here in 15 years, but certainly uh, we could look back to this day and say that's what we started re-envisioning what our Civic Center should look like. So thank you very much for all your support, and thank you to the Japanese American communities here today and to the Little Tokyo residents and business owners and all of you who have preserved Little Tokyo despite the massive encroachment and effort to uh, not have what we have today, the preservation we've done. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, let's prepare to vote on that item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll tab, you late the vote. 12 eyes. Let's take up uh, item In fact, I think Rob, Rob Kwan, items 128 and 145, and then general public comment. So, Madam Clerk, if you'd give him two minutes, and then one minute after that for his general public comment. 128, Mr. Kwan, and 145, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, for item 145, we're amending the Justice Fund. I want to remind this council that the Justice Fund is not a piggy bank. Um, I reserve my outrage given that this really isn't going to do much. Uh, it's mostly a motion for a headline and photo op, given that most kids that are detained in the city of Los Angeles have already received legal representation, and instead of actually covering their parents, which might ensure family reunification, we're not doing anything there. Uh, I want to thank Councilmember Bonin for getting arrested yesterday, protesting ICE, um, after a year and a half, I'd like to see the rest of the council join up and actually do something about family reunification and keeping families here in L.A. together and separating LAPD from ICE. For item 128, our chief of police is going to get $350,000 a year. I know y'all were paid a lot, but I didn't know he was paid that much. This is nearly as much as the U.S. president. Uh, I want to remind this council that LAPD has cost this city nearly $400 million in legal settlements over the last 13 years. Who likes that salary of $350,000? The LA Police Protective League. 
the coattails trickle down. Blue lives matter most here. This is exemplified by your silence. Your silence last week as you confirmed Chief Moore, and not a single one of you had the courage to actually bring up use of force, de-escalation, and police shootings that lead this nation. Not even if your district includes Boyle Heights, the highest rate in this city. Your silence is in part because the LA Police Protective League Union is the biggest special interest in this city. Money doesn't just speak, it silences. This is the same reason that we haven't seen any action nearly two years into the Trump presidency on ICE and LAPD. For my general comment, public comment, I want to turn to C. Breeze. Madam, I want to turn to Measure S. Madam Clerk, you give him his one minute? The things that inspired this council to finally take some sort of action on campaign finance reform. This came after four years of inaction when the Ethics Commission recommended upping our matching funds program. Last year, we saw a resolution supporting the Disclose Act, never heard in the Rules Committee. A year and a half ago, after we saw how the pay-to-play system rules this city in the Seabreeze scandal, what's happened? We saw three motions introduced, public financing, full public financing, six to one matching funds rate increase, a developer ban, not a single piece of action. Three months ago, the Ethics Commission submitted lobbying reforms, no action. Six months ago, we saw a monthly uh, evening meeting motion that would allow our council meetings to be far more accessible. No action. When this council comes back from recess, it's important, absolutely important, that you finally do something about the undue influence of money in politics. If people are ever going to believe in our country again... Thank you, Mr. Kwan. Thank you. So if I can get uh, Mr. Mr. Gus items... 123, 128, 129 in general public comment. Uh, council members, I, uh, Mr. City Attorney, I want to bring to your attention that your agenda only has um, item number 63, so you're missing dozens and dozens and dozens of things from your agenda, inhibiting the public's ability to read what you have on each agenda item. And, um, and that is hurting the public's ability to participate in this meeting. You're missing half of the items that the public can speak on. So if I'm a little bit off on my numbers, that's your fault, not mine. Um, with regard to the animal uh, issue, helping uh, animals of homeless people in the shelters, it's a wonderful idea. I told Mr. Koretz that I would have loved to have written an article about this. I could have praised animal services. I could have praised Mr. Koretz and any commissioner that was on this. The problem is Animal Services doesn't provide records. So here was a perfect opportunity to have great publicity over this subject. I would have been thrilled to write about this for City Watch. I would have been thrilled to talk about it on the radio. But because Animal Services continues to withhold documents, praise that I would love to give to the city on this issue, the homeless people and animals in the shelter story, I, I can't. Uh, if the city wishes to cough up the documents, I am ready to write a positive article, but make sure that you honor all public information requests. Regarding the salary for Chief Moore, I think Chief Moore's base salary should be lower, but I think you should put a million dollar ceiling on his salary. Lower his base salary to a quarter million dollars and give Chief Moore a $50,000 bonus for every million dollars in legal settlements that aren't made, so that Chief Moore has an incentive to make a million dollars a year, he'll get a $50,000 bonus for every million dollars he saves the city in wrongful death suits, shooting of unarmed black men and things of that color. Incentivize the police of Ch Chief Job. I have nothing against Chief Moore. I met him once in Van Nuys. He seems like a nice man. But if you want to save us $14.5 million, lower his base salary to a quarter million, raise it to a ceiling of a million dollars, and bring some private sector common sense. And if he meets his salary ceiling, you will save the city $14.5 million. I don't know why Mr. Wesson doesn't do that, but Mr. Bonin's paying attention. Maybe that's a solution we can talk about. I'd be thrilled to write about it if you pursue that. No games, no hijinks. I'll write about it if you want to talk about it. Um, and the same thing with Cat Packer. 
why is a black woman getting half of the base salary of a white man? Why is Cat Packer worth half the amount of base salary as the white chief of police? Bring in private sector concepts. Let's give him his one minute. Council members, as I recently wrote in my number one most read article on City Watch LA, uh, I would encourage every one of you to watch the free speech and how it's handled at the county supervisors meeting. There are no ad hominem personal attacks on the elected officials. There are virtually no First Amendment lawsuits. And everybody, from lawyers and MBAs to doctors and nurses and homeless people and my fellow gadflies out here, there are no First Amendment lawsuits. It's simply because the county supervisors allow free speech. As you may know, there was a Supreme Court ruling on a case out of Florida which is going to make the antagonism here and the ad hominem attacks much worse, and they're not going to get better. I'll be writing about that again soon. But I would encourage you to model your public participation on the county meetings. They are a model of free speech. And uh, take a look at them. You'll see how they're run differently. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. City Attorney, that closes the multi-comment section of today's agenda. Uh, Madam Clerk, let's vote on items 123 and 138 through 144. So please open the roll. Close. Excuse me, Mr. President, there is a substitute motion for item 140. Well, let's uh, remove 140. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Now let's take up 140 separately. And two votes are required for a substitute motion. The first vote would be whether to substitute. Okay, that's on the first vote, let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Now let's actually vote on the item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Now let's vote on items 146 through 149. Items 151 through 157. Please open the roll. Um, excuse me, Mr. President, there's also a substitute motion on 156. Then let us separate out 156. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Now let's go to 156. In fact, uh, we'll hold it, it needs to be distributed, okay. Okay, we're gonna go to item 122. I'm going to briefly uh, reopen public comment for about nine or 10 minutes. Celine Hussini, Nadia Khan, Glenda Stamper, please just come forward, please. And as the speakers make their way forward, the amending motion for item 122 has been posted and circulated for council's consideration. Okay, please come forward. Yes. Okay. My name is Celine Cusini, and I'm representing the Palestinian Youth Movement of LA to say that we strongly condemn CVE. PYM represents a large part of the Arab and Arab Muslim community in LA, and we work with hundreds of families who are refugees and who are also among the primary targets of the CVE program. This discriminatory grant will put our communities, including incoming refugees, in an increasingly vulnerable position. The mayor's office claims that CVE is not targeting Muslims, yet almost all of the sub CVE subgrantees serve Muslim populations. The program targets orgs that do not even 
often fall within LA County, such as the TIA Foundation in Orange County, which serves refugees and immigrants who mostly identify as Muslim. Your decision will thus impact people that are not even constituents of LA County. Why go out of your way to do this? Because CBE clearly intends to criminalize Muslims, black and brown youth, through racist Islamic, Islamophobic assumptions that have historically been used to justify the targeting, policing, and surveillance of our communities. We say no to CBE, and we will not accept any amendments. If the mayor's office is truly concerned with the youth of LA, then listen to us. We have repeatedly been rejecting CBE, and yet we still have to be here. When we say we reject CBE, Thank it you. means we reject all... Thank you. Next speaker. Miss, you're taking other people's time. Next speaker. Yes. Hi, my name is Nadia Khan. I'm with the Stop LAPD Spine Coalition. I'm also a teacher, and I'm here to demand that you reject this grant for countering violent extremism. It is part of a much larger war on youth. If you didn't learn your lesson from gang injunctions and gang databases when those were being pushed and people were opposing them, this is exactly what's happening today. As a teacher, I see the impact CVE will have on black and brown youth. This is part of a much larger uh, war against youth. It's based on flawed theories. It's based on behavioral surveillance. It does not allow any kind of critical thought to happen in our classrooms. It leads to more paranoia and distrust. The city is claiming that if they are opposing family separation, then you will oppose this grant for CVE because CVE only leads to more law enforcement, more criminalization, and more distrust. CVE does not make us safe. And to, and to uh, echo my comrade Celine, there cannot be any amendment. No transparency, no amendment will, will fix something that is so inherently racist and flawed. Thank you. If, so if I can get Pete White, Hamid Khan, uh, Monique Lopez. Yes, yes, identify yourself, welcome. Okay, my name is Glenda and I'm a high school student at LBUSD and I'm here to stress that the city rejects a grant for CVE. CVE is not safe and no safe space in our communities, especially regarding youth and how we are limited in our creativity of the constant paranoia that CVE, CVE is policing our behavior and thoughts. And I'm here today because I feel LA and Long Beach strongly influence each other when it comes to making decisions like this. When it comes to spending over $400,000, it would be more beneficial to our youth in programs instead of law enforcement. CVE categorizes black and brown and Muslim youth as national security threats and it plays in a popular imagination of people policing and practices that demises our communities. No amendment can be made it better when it's solely based on already being criminals. CVE implies the black and brown Muslim communities and themselves are at risk, which plays into a racist stereotype. Next that speaker, no. Next speaker, please identify yourself. Hi, my name is uh, Hamid Khan with the Stop LAPD Spine Coalition. It is extremely double standard and hypocritical for the mayor and this body to speak about against the separation of immigrant children, but yet just support a program that will impact children of, the, of this community. It, ex it is extremely hypocritical for this mayor and this body to speak about hate crimes against Muslims, but yet support programs that will pathologize and demonize Muslim youth and continue with the assault and give the excuses and a license for racial profiling. It is absolutely hypocritical and a double standard for this body to speak out for equal rights, but yet support these programs which are going to impact our children. So we say no to CBE. We say no no amendment is going to fix this problem, so we, we, we demand that this body completely reject the institution of this program. Thank you. Mr. White. Pete White, Los Angeles Community Action Network and Stop LAPD Spine. Newsweek 2017. White men have committed more mass shootings than any other group. CNN 2017. How America has silently accepted the rage of white men. CBS 2018. The threat of white radical extrem extremism in the age of Trump. What do we have there? We have a pattern, right? We have a pattern of violent extremism um, of white people. Today's conversation, CVE, right, should really focus on countering violent extremism of white men. Instead, the targeting of Muslim, black, and brown youth continues. Not an aberration, but a continuation of racist and violent history. Instead, we have conversations around black identity extremism. We say no to the CVE grant. We hope that you say no as well, um, so we can move our communities in a direction that is indeed safe. CVE grants and this type of policing does not make anyone safer. Thank you. Thank you. Sophia, 
Sophia Arman, uh, Magela Mendez, Mario De Leon, please come forward. Please, your, the sooner you get here, you're, you don't want to waste time. So, Sophia Arman, Jaime Garcia, yes, sir. Cool. Uh, my name is Mario De Leon. I'm here with Free Radicals and Stop LAPD Spine Coalition, and I'm here to strongly oppose CVE grant to the city with the current administration and its attacks on people from Central America, labeling us as gang members from MS-13. Muslim people and black people, we cannot trust any of this funding is in good faith to protect our communities and our youth. It never was. The history of counting violence has always targeted black and brown people and only benefits the continuous surveillance and police state with a long-term agenda to silence any dissent and erase us from history. As a future teacher, I would not feel comfortable cooperating with this program, and I ask you not to put educators in a role to also be informants to the FBI. Okay, next speaker, identify yourself. Hi, my name is Jamie Garcia. I'm with the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition. CVE must not be funded, and its policies and practices must end. CVE is grounded in behavioral surveillance, which criminalizes people and their behaviors based on an arbitrary definition of suspicion. According to the Office of Director of National Intelligence, suspicion is defined as observed behavior, reasonably indicative of pre-operational planning of criminal or terrorist behavior. So here we are, we've moved into a day and age where thought crime is something that we're actually asking our law enforcement and teachers and mental health workers to actually engage in. So attempting to criminalize or interpret behavior as dangerous before an act occurs only is an attempt to legitimize racial profiling. We know what communities have always been targeted and this practice only legitimizes it. We know in the suspicious activity report, um, in an audit in 2015, 50% of suspicious activity reports were opened up on black women and this is a counterterrorism program. So again, we see the um, evidence of racial profiling. We see this practice of behavioral surveillance in predictive policing and other, um, other hey. data. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Maz Munir, uh, Labani Hogg, John Mater. Yes, sir. We're, the, okay. Go identify Hello, yourself. my name is uh, Joey Juarez. I'm with PYM and um, other organizations. Um, CVE is not safe and has no space in our communities. CVE is anti-black, Islamophobic, racist, does, and does not, make our, does not make us safe. Invest in youth, not CVE. CVE criminalizes black and brown youth. We need to vote no on CVE. Put money into uplifting our communities, not criminalizing them. CVE hurts our communities. A yes on CVE is a vote um, on yet another tool of destruction against humanity. Um, and is like an, and is yet another Islamophobic tool um, against Muslims and um, other members of humanity. And we, and along with voting no on CVE, we must commit to we must commit to ending Zionism in all its forms in this country and around the world. So thanks. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning, Laboning Hawk on behalf of Asian Americans Advancing Justice and the Coalition to Stop CVE in LA. I don't want to take much time because I've talked to many of you before. I do want to present for the record of this council file for item number 122, a sign-on letter from organizations, over 60 of which in LA oppose CVE, and a petition where over 1,400 people have signed a petition asking you all to vote no on CVE. I would uh, ask that this be part of the record. Next, identify yourself. My name is Maz Munir. I'm here on behalf of MSA West, an organization serving over 3,000 students at 32 college campuses across the West Coast. America has a history of impeding the rights of citizens through government surveillance, intelligence, and intervention programs. Programs such as COINTELPRO and PRISM have targeted minority groups based on dehumanizing assumptions about race, ethnicity, and religion. CVE is no different. Although proffered as a program to prevent violent extremism, extremism through community-driven efforts by empowering local uh, partners. The rhetoric surrounding it is basked in language that targets and stigmatizes the American Muslim community. 
the very fiction upon which it rests lies the belief that American Muslim communities are inherently suspect even when there exists no substantial proof to legitimize that claim. Being part of an organization that serves students, I can attest that this program, it, uh, that college is a time for Muslim students to connect with their faith and cultural identity. This false framework of radicalization which paints students who take pride in or openly express their faith as inherently suspect Thank and headed you. towards a dangerous Thank you, sir. Did, uh, so you'll be the last speaker. Please identify yourself. I'm John Motter. Sorry, I'm John Motter with Ground Game LA. I'm a resident of Koreatown, former Marine infantryman and a combat veteran of Iraq and Afghanistan. And I want to relay some personal experiences of mine to help illustrate the importance of combating uh, violent extremism at home. I've seen uh, a pair of children older than 10 years old being raked and terrorized with machine gun fire while out herding their goats. An elderly man shot to death for walking around his neighborhood. Another father shot to death while out tending his crops. The shooters were later found eating the watermelons he had just picked laying next to his body. Another woman indiscriminately fired upon with rifle fire. The shooter later asking if he should just finish her off. Every single perpetrator was a white male born and raised in America and every single victim was a brown Muslim. Y'all want to combat violent extremism, you need to get recruiters the hell out of our schools, you need to kick war profiteers out of Los Angeles, and start instituting classes that instruct children on the history of white supremacy in America and US imperialism. Thank you. Mr. Herman, sit down. Uh, Mr. No, sit down. Your name was not called, sit down. Um, Mr. But you're disrupting the meeting, Mr. Herman, your last warning. Mr. Bonin. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, uh, and thank you, colleagues. I wanted to rise uh, and urge us to vote no on this today. Uh, this is a matter that has been talked about a lot nationwide, has been talked a lot about locally, uh, has been in committee, and has been uh, members of this body uh, and of the city have tried to improve this and make this work. Uh, I don't believe that it is a program that, that can work or is appropriate for Los Angeles, particularly at this time. Um, usually accepting a grant is a particularly non-controversial item for this body. We like to get money from other agencies and other levels of government to do things. This is a program that was started under the Obama administration, uh, and its purpose was to uh, address the threat of, uh, effectively, uh, Muslim or Islamic terrorism. Uh, it was designed in order to collect uh, information, to surveil people, uh, and to try to predict terrorist behavior in Islamic communities. And it did so in ways that I think most of us would, would consider to be racial profiling. Um, it was, it was dressed up with a, a lot of lipstick on the pig, uh, but then when the Trump administration came into office, they actually tried to make this worse. They actually tried to rename it the Countering Radical Islam Program or the Countering uh, Violent Jihad Program. They backed off on that, but they also backed off on and pulled funding for programs under the CVE umbrella to address white supremacy uh, and uh, the threats of white terrorism in this country. Uh, it is a, a program with, uh, I feel, a misplaced focus uh, addressing the wrong threat. As much as it has been dressed up and modified, uh, this is still about targeting Islamic and, and, and communities of color. Uh, when the, the real threat, as we all know in this country, of terrorism, whether this administration chooses to refer to it as terrorism or not, is white guys with guns. Uh, that's who's doing the killing here in this country, and that's where the real terrorist threat is happening. Uh, I also think we need to consider the climate that we're in and the timing that we're in. Just last week, the Supreme Court upheld what is, and we all know it to be, a ban on Muslims. Uh, you know, it, is, it has been described differently by the president. It has been justified differently by the courts. It's a Muslim ban. In that climate, at a time when this administration is consistently vilifying people of the Islamic faith, at a time when this administration is using terms like infestation to refer to immigrants, at a time when this country is on a horribly slippery slope about demonizing other communities, this is not the right time to be doing this. Uh, the erosion of our civil liberties doesn't come in leaps and bounds. It comes in, in drops here and there. And 
since 9-11, there have been many drops, uh, and this is yet another. Uh, and I think it is imprudent and wrong for us to do this. I know that the mayor's office has worked very hard and members of the council and public safety committee have worked very hard to try to modify this program for Los Angeles to make it not what it is nationwide. Um, and I admire that and I respect that. But you know, if, 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 uh, if you lay down with dogs, you're gonna get fleas and this is a, 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 a flea ridden program nationwide. Uh, so I think it's worth noting that this program is opposed by uh, the Islamic Shura Council, which is an umbrella organization of 75 mosques and Islamic groups in Southern California, uh, by 60 other groups. And I'll just name a few of them because their name's familiar to this body. The ACLU. API Equality, the Arab American Coalition of the Democratic Party, Black Lives Matters, the Central American Resource Center, Churla, the Council on uh, American Islamic Relations, Holman United Methodist Church, the National Immigration Law Center, the National Lawyers Guild, Public Council, the UCLA Labor Center, and Unite Here. Many, many other groups. Those are just a few I picked because I know they're known to this body as organizations that we work with and respect. So uh, I think now of all times with what is happening in this country, this is the wrong time to embrace this program and participate with it. I don't think that we can be forming a partnership with the Trump administration uh, on terrorism when they are very clearly determined to racially profile in this country uh, and are refusing to deal with the, the real genuine threats to our society and our democracy. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Rue. Thank you, Mr. President. Could I call them? Uh, is it the mayor's office or someone I could ask a couple of questions on? I thought I just saw them. Do we have representatives from the mayor's office? Thank you so much, and, uh, and I was really hoping that we had, were able to come to some sort of resolution by now, but um, can you briefly describe the program that's at hand, that, that we're voting on today? Sure, absolutely. Funding from this grant will go to support prevention of hate and bias, and to build resilience of communities against hate and bias of all its form. This includes white supremacist, Islamophobia, bullying, Programming that is funded by this grant operates outside of the lanes of law enforcement. Activities and organizations who are subrecipient of these funds will specifically work on activities related to prevention of neo-Nazi white supremacist groups. We will be working with the, the report before council does specify funding that is specifically allocated to neo-Nazi white supremacist activities and programming that will continue to build resilience in workshops against it. Other funds within this grant goes to support youth leadership, promoting culturally appropriate services such as mental health, building a network of community-based organizations who can address a range of social services and social needs. All the programming under this grant is based on the Center for Disease Control Protective Factors, essentially elevating individuals, families, and communities and ensuring that we have strong communities and investing in the well-being of these communities goes to operate completely outside of a law enforcement and essentially what is being portrayed as a surveillance program. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so, you know, um, I think one of the big, biggest concerns are about information sharing and transfer of data. Um, so what safeguards uh, are in place to, uh, in particular, address that issue as well as all of the other issues that many of the advocates are concerned about? Sure, so privacy and civil rights are a priority. And we have a mayor 
and city council leadership that will never stand for violations of civil rights and privacies. This particular grant does not require us to collect PII, personal identifying information. We have explicit language in each of our contracts that the city will not collect PII. Additionally, language in contracts specifically speaks to protection of privacies, including HIPAA regulations. Those who are working in the realm of social services, particularly social scientists and social workers, must... Look, wait, no, 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 come on. Let her answer the question, please. Let's be fair. Go ahead. Must comply with Even HIPAA if you regulations, let her answer. which are also explicitly listed in our contract in, in the language. We have worked diligently with our city attorney's office to ensure that those protections are in our contracts. So what, um, who will be affected if this program is not funded? And secondarily, um, who is in support outside of the people who are getting funded for this particular program? Sure. So to your first point, who's affected? It would be all of us. It would be all the residents of the city. If we give back this money and we don't invest in the well-being of our communities, we are essentially leaving no alternatives for prevention and allowing a law enforcement only solution to this very complex issue. While we fully understand and grasp the optics and the unfortunate rhetoric that is coming out of this administration, this is precisely what this fund is going to go to fight against. And that is the polarization and to fight against hate and bias. Giving back this money will leave a vacuum for law enforcement solutions only. Moreover, giving back this money will put this money back in the U.S. Treasury, which will essentially leave it open for this administration to do as they please with it. To okay, your let's keep it down, please. Let's, please, just let him ask his questions. Okay. Let her answer them, just relax. Thank you. To your second point about the support of this grant, we have been working with a wide range of community-based organizations, but also we've been working with experts, both academic experts as well as experts in violence prevention, broadly speaking. No, please, 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 please. Don't let me tell you again. This may, I don't know exactly where this is going, but would you please just let her answer the questions and let us think about how we're gonna move forward. So I don't wanna have to ask the audience to be quiet again. Don't, don't do yourself a disservice. Let her speak, we let you speak. Now go ahead, Mr. Rue, please. Thank you, so please. the organizations we have been working with, we've been working closely with the UCLA School of Public Health as one of our advisors. Uh, we've also been working with various other academics. Those who've been supportive of this uh, include Muslims for Progressive Values, AJC, ADL, Elm Foundation, MPAC, the Islamic Center of Southern California, um, USC uh, School of uh, Policy, uh, as well as several other uh, MWAC, several other organizations that have been serving on our advisory committee. In addition to the community members and the organizations <coughs> I mentioned and our academic partners, we've also been working with other government partners and that includes the Department of Mental Health. It includes working with LAUSD and their human relations. Uh, it also includes working with Health and Human Services. So we have made every effort to partner both across community-based organizations as well as across other government partners in ensuring that this operates outside the purview of law enforcement. One last point, if I may. Those of you who were here when we were talking about gang prevention and intervention, this was a wildly unpopular project. 
It was rejected by law enforcement and it was rejected by the community alike. 10 years forward, our gang prevention and intervention model are models not only nationally but internationally. What is before us today is how we move forward in understanding prevention of something that is so complex as to suggest that hate and bias are seeds that lead to extremism, which essentially leads to violence. And we have seen it over and over again, not only in the US, but also overseas. We cannot ignore homegrown violent extremists who utilize a narrative of white supremacist hate to promote violence. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, you know what, Mr. Rue, uh, this is what I'm, I'm thinking, uh, members, that um, I'm going to ask you to allow me to send this back to committee. And no, no, to send this back to committee and then try to figure out a way to, to uh, provide the services that actually need to be done. We have listened to folk on both sides. This has been a long process, uh, but I, if, if, if you guys would allow me, I'd like to send it back to committee, get engaged uh, myself and see if we can't somehow come up with something where we can elevate uh, comfort levels on all sides. But as of this moment, I just think that's the best uh, approach for this council to take, and I would ask you to join me. I'm fine with that, Mr. President. Thank you. Are we okay? All right, well, thank you thank for you. for coming. And um, Mr. Harris Dawson, uh, if you're good, I'm just gonna uh, re send this right back to committee. There will be no vote on this issue today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's... Mr. Price, uh, you had mentioned you you had mentioned something earlier about item nine. Did you want to speak on item nine? Well, yeah, no, commissioner, commissioner, oppose commissioner. If we can add the commissioner, please come forward, Sergeant. If you could, he's he's went the other way. He's right behind you. Al. Please, come on, have a seat. Mr. President, are we ready? Mr. Price, floor is yours. Thank, thank you. Um, we have uh, John Vane, uh, present commissioner on the Convention Bureau, and, and is up for re, uh, reappointment. Uh, sorry, Mr. Vane, you weren't able to join us at the uh, Economic Development Commission meeting, committee meeting, but we're glad you're here today. And thank, thank you for you having again me. For your willingness to serve. Uh, we do have a few questions, though. Several years ago, as you are uh, aware, the city. Uh, conducted a study affirming the city's needs for more hotel rooms. Uh, we were excited, of course, uh, to learn that uh, there are approximately 5,000 in the pipeline now within walking distance, and that's, a, that's a, certainly a good development. Uh, but would you agree that our biggest challenges to attracting more tourism to our city is the lack of hotel rooms? And, and, and what do you think the commission should be doing about that? I think that, that hotels is one of the two most important uh, issues. I think another one is the modernization of, of the convention center. Um, in terms of what the commission can do, there's certain uh, responsibilities we have and, and in many of which we don't. But I think as a, as a uh, board, we are very, very supportive as, of uh, increasing the number of hotel rooms as, as much as reasonably possible. You mentioned the convention center. Of course, we are uh, looking very seriously at uh, plans to renovate and expand uh, the convention center uh, in ways that we haven't before. Uh, but how do you see the city capitalizing on these opportunities to provide benefits for local hire, local business participation? 
Uh, what kind of an engine for economic opportunity do you see this project being? I think uh, at the core of everything we're doing, um, the creation of jobs is the most important and, and to the extent that we can uh, provide jobs for local businesses, we should do so. One of my other hats in the city is I'm on the uh, LA Business Council and we're working with a company that uh, provides software to take the friction out of hiring local businesses uh, at small scale as opposed to the easier route of going after just large businesses, whether or not they're within the city. So I think it's a very, very important objective. But you'd be supportive of initiatives to expand and uh, provide greater opportunities for local businesses. Absolutely. In this contracting process as it, as it moves forward. Um, although, you know, a lot of the attention on, on tourism is focused on uh, hitting the, uh, the large uh, sites uh, around town, the, the traditional uh, tourist spots. However, there's a great deal of, of opportunity, a great deal of, of, uh, of resources uh, associated with cultural tourism. You know, how do we get uh, uh, tourists uh, out to uh, East LA or South LA or, or the Valley uh, in ways that they have not done before? Uh, I think it's South all about, LA. I'm sorry. Any, any thoughts about how the commission, how the commission can be a, a stronger advocate for encouraging greater cultural tourism uh, as a part of its uh, efforts? I think advocating with the LATCB how to uh, allocate its resources to that is, is something that's important. I was actually just asked by a U.S. Senator who's bringing her family out here uh, where she should go, and I said, you asked the right guy because I spent a lot of time on this topic, and many of the things I'm recommending to her are off the beaten path, not just um, the, you know, the, the checklist that you get online. Right. Well, again, we think it's important that we focus more uh, on cultural tourism and, and hope that you will be a strong proponent of that uh, on the commission as we move forward, uh, as we try to expand opportunities and let folks know uh, of the total of the resources that are available in our city. I certainly will. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you, I, it's my understanding, I'm going to call on Mr. Rue, but you, you need to make a motion and I will second that okay. motion, I, I, Mr. I'll, I'll move that we uh, approve the appointment of John Bain to the Thank you. Uh, and Mr. Clerk, I'll, I'll second it. Mr. Rue? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to quickly rise and say uh, uh, thank you to the chairman of the LA Convention and Tourism Board of uh, uh, Tour Tourism Development Board uh, Commissioners, <laughs> which I know you guys uh, changed your name. And um, but I really want to thank you because it's been a pleasure working with you um, for the past several years, and also uh, not only your service on this commission, but your service on numerous other facilities. Uh, within the city of Los Angeles, whether it be affiliated with the city of LA or or in in the nonprofit sector, I really value your um, uh, your friendship and, and your support, and especially when it comes to tourism, because uh, in my district, which you're very aware of, we have a different. While we while I completely support the tourism industry, there is also ancillary effects that you are addressing and you are helping to address to alleviate the neighborhood. So thank you so very much and look forward to working with you again and congratulations. Likewise, thank you very much. Okay, no more speakers on the queue. So on this item, uh, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. Okay, now Madam Clerk, that's approved. Okay, now let's vote on item 14. Thank you. Um, and Mr. President, yes. on item 14, there is one clerical error to address. In recommendation number eight, the date should be the date of the Plum hearing, which was June 26, 2018. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, let's prepare to vote on this item. Madam Clerk has amended, correct? Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. Now let's move to item 15. On item 15, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. And Mr. President, for the record, the awards for items 14 and 15 will be carried over to July 31st. Let me call up, uh, I'm going to go just for a couple of Speakers, Ms. Richardson, Jacqueline Rich Richardson, general public comment. Ms. Richardson, a Ms. Graham, Candace Graham. Please come forward. Ms. Graham, are you here? Okay, you're right behind Ms. Richardson. Yes, Ms. Richardson, one minute. 
This is in regard to black youth being employed. Uh, they should realize if they want to be employed, they should stay out of trouble, first of all. Second, they have to make sure the girls don't follow them around or bother them because they have money and vice versa. They don't bother the, gir bother the girls. And um, they also have to realize they need to eat. Some people don't eat before they go to work. Uh, they need, if it's nothing but a can of pork and beans or oatmeal, they need to eat before they go to work so they have energy to get from point A to point B, from eight until four o'clock without having to rest. And then they have to remember that they don't tell lies. Everyone wants a youth that's clean and trustable. Uh, doing these few things will help them to be employed and help them help to have that gate open so that if somebody calls them, they're ready to go to work. Thank you, Ms. Graham. Hi, thank you guys for being so sweet. And I'm sorry I wasn't able to inform the city council earlier. Mr. Wesson and all of you guys, you have been fantastic. My job was to let you know that Bill Huey passed. The Fair Housing Coalition. The landlord, the, Bill? Yes. I, I'm sorry. I know he was a great, a great friend. Uh, Fair Housing Coalition, the Housing Providers Network, we're together with the AOA, AGLA. They're at the Board of Supervisors today, so everybody wasn't able to be here. We do want to have a memorial for Bill in the style that Bill knew. The only thing that I know, the only thing that Bill know, knew, are we fight for, like you fight for, is the city of Los Angeles. And uh, what we've been fighting for before it was an epic, was the homeless situation. Thank you. You know what, if you could give us, uh, give us a uh, bio and some other things. In fact, if I could get a staff member, Andrew, 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 Andrew. If we, Ms. Uh, Graham, could you talk to Andrew on the side, give him all the information. When we come back, maybe we'll do something here. Uh, many of us knew knew him and knew him well, all right? And we are saddened by it. It's, it's our loss, all of ours. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Harris Dawson, I think you have items, was it 33 through 39? Why don't we address those, those yes. issues now? Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Uh, Council Member Krikorian and I have been working on improving the process by which we draw down on the Heritage Month funds each fiscal years. This substitute motion uh, doesn't change the amount requested for any, um, for any of the events. It simply consolidates them, uh, all of the requests, into one and moves that, moves that we fund uh, the additional amount needed for all the events in this fiscal year. Okay, well, let's... Uh... And for the record, Mr. President, this is a substitute motion, and it's for items 33 through 39, item 50, 55, and 156. So there would be two votes. The first vote would be whether to substitute. First vote is on substitution. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Okay, now we'll actually vote on the issue. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. Okay, do we have Adam Smith? Adam Smith, do we have Adam Smith? What about uh, Michael uh, Novick? Brenda Gutierrez, come forward. Mickey Jackson. This is general public comment. Good morning. Uh, my name is Brenda Gutierrez. I'm a community organizer and a member of the American Indian Movement SoCal, as well as a constituent of District 10. City Council hasn't heard any of the campaign finance reform motions introduced a year and a half ago and has failed to rebuild trust with the public after the sea breeze scandal. The influ influence of money in politics affects every issue this council touches, everything from affordable housing, homelessness, and so on. 
Our elected officials should not be afraid to criticize their funders. But unfortunately, money doesn't just speak, it silences. Our local politics are dominated by LA uh, Pol Police Protective League Union, the LA Jobs Pact, and developers. I ask that when City Council returns from recess, it finally takes up the issue of campaign finance reform and addresses money in politics because as one of you said, and I quote, we need to find solutions that build greater trust within the people we represent and make the entire system fairer and more transparent. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ha. Jackson. Mickey Jackson. Marco Flores. Mickey Jackson with Healthy Housing Foundation, a project of AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Uh, I have a couple of concerns. One is pre-meetings that are being held before some of the committee meetings and other meetings. Uh, the city's description of them has been that they have, they're substantive and they're not open to the public and so far we haven't been able to get any documents from them. So we would like a cure and correct for that. It is a Brown Act violation. I'm also concerned that uh, we, we are going on a decision that was made as far ago as 2012 to, or even back further, to demolish Parker Center, the actual building itself, when it could house 732 homeless people. We have a different set of priorities now, and that building should be housing homeless people to redeem itself, not just being torn down and become luxury offices. I see many homeless people on the street, but I see no homeless city bureaucrats at their desks on the street. Thank you. Mr. Flores. Good afternoon. My name is Marco Flores. I'm a member of the American Indian Movement and a constituent of District 38. Until we address our campaign financing issues, real change will never happen. A year and a half ago, three motions were introduced to handle just that. Full public financing of elections, six to one matching funds increase, and a developer ban. It's been a year and a half and no action has been taken on these motions. Homelessness in LA is out of control, ICE has become a terrorist organization, and police brutality is only getting worse. We can no longer afford to shelve this issue. Let's stop catering to the wealthy and let's start listening to the people. Let's get big money out of politics and let's address campaign finance reform. Thank you. Eugene uh, Pesikoff or Kof? Please pronounce that. I know I probably. Pesikov. Eugene Pesikov. I was close. Eugene Pesikov? I was close. Go ahead. Not quite. So my name is uh, Eugene Pesikov. I'm an uh, activist and a proud member of DSA. And uh, like my uh, comrades before, I wanted to speak on the campaign finance issue as well. And I kind of wanted to be frank since my comrades already said everything that I feel uh, could be said. And that's essentially for the love of God, I am asking you, if not demanding, that you guys be brave and courageous and actually stand up to big money. You guys know that the, you guys have been fighting this for over decades. And you know that the solution to this is by getting money out of politics. All of you know that. And I understand that it takes courage and bravery to do the right thing, but right now is as important as as important time as any to, to stand up and do something. The housing and homelessness situation is directly connected to this because if you keep giving out these housing and homeless projects as a result of the money that are being camp, uh, excuse me, challenged to your campaign. Thank then. you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Ms. Martinez, was it 1.45? Yes. And I do have a card. Do from... you want to go ahead and take cards first? Okay. And an amending motion has been posted and circulated for consideration on okay. item 145. Thank you. Mariana, Lindsay, and then, uh, so if we can get Mariana and then Lindsay to come forward.
Good morning. I'm Lindsay Toslowski, Executive Director of the Immigrant Defenders Law Center. We're one of the beneficiaries of the LA Justice Fund. I want to thank um, Councilwoman Martinez and Councilmember Bonin for moving forward with this amendment. We would just ask that the amendment also include representation for parents who are detained locally. Without that amendment, this will be a very limited motion that will only allow us to find a needle in the haystack of the detained parents who are here locally who have a child who's detained in one of our local shelters. So with that amendment, we would strongly support this and find that this will make a strong statement that here in Los Angeles, we support due process rights for all. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Herman? Spartan is here, my sir. Mr. Herman, you have one minute on this item, then I'll call you back for general public comment. You, you got here after the multi-section, so come on. Mr. Herman, you want to speak on this item or not? Come forward, start his time. Well, I have to stay on topic 42 U.S.C. 1983, item 145, which states for the record, fuck you. In addition to my motion under Mr. Bonin and all this bullshit puppet talk about helping me, the homeless, has done not one goddamn thing to detain me in the Los Angeles considered eligible funds when you stuck me in the metropolitan fucking jail for those yes. fucking so this five okay, to be Mr. On the agenda. Uh, Mr. Herman, so why don't you, Mr. Herman, what you're going to do, Mr. Herman, sit down. Now, sergeants, Mr. Herman, Mr. Herman, remove Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman, I'm, because you were off topic, I'm trying to tell you to sit down so I will call you back for general public comment. You would not do that, so now you're going to be removed. Okay, Ms. Martinez. President, so, Mr. President, I would like to amend the language in my motion to include detained and housed in Los Angeles as re... Hold on, Mr. Herman, Mr. Mr. Herman is disrupting this meeting again. Mr. Herman, sergeants, remove Mr. Herman. Remove Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman, please, he is uh, Mr. City Attorney, continuing to disrupt this meeting. He He's is. continuing to disrupt this meeting. Let Please escort him uh, outside of these chambers. He is disrupting this meeting. He is disrupting this meeting. He is disrupting this meeting, he is disrupting this meeting as... Uh, yeah. Ms. Ramirez was in mid-sentence when he started shouting and cut her off, and he's continuing to shout as he's escorted out of the chambers. And he's still shouting. Okay, Ms. Martinez. <laughs> like I was saying, Mr. President, I'd like to amend the language in my original motion to include detained or housed in Los Angeles as written in the amending language. I ask for an eyeball. Okay. Let's, uh, I guess it's now Mr. Clerk, let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate. You have an eyes. All right. Let's now move to item one. Let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. You have an eyes. And Madam Clerk, uh, it's my understanding we can now vote on item two as amended. Yes, the amending motion has been posted and circulated. Okay, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. You have an eyes. Let's see if we can't put uh, items 128 and 129 together. So that's before this body, let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. You have an eyes. Now let's move to item 150. And Madam Clerk, I believe this is a two, two vote item. That is correct. So we. The first vote is whether to substitute. So the first vote is on the substitution. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. You'll have an eyes. That brings us to item 61. Um, excuse me, Mr. President, then we need a second vote on the motion itself. Okay, my mistake. Okay, so let's give the second vote. On 150, let's open the roll, close it, 
Tabulate. Eleven eyes. Item 61, I would like to call up Lauren Akiem and Jill Sorrell. Again, so I had, I don't, I've called them uh, Lauren and Jill. Are you here, Lauren and Jill? Please. Identify. Hi, my name is Lauren Akiam. I'm here with the LA Alliance for a New Economy and the Our Water LA Coalition. I apologize, I went to the dentist, so my mouth is a little numb. But I am here, we are here in support of the county safe clean water program and in support of the city and continuing um, to support the county's measure and we look forward to continuing to work with the city to ensure that the safe clean water program is fair and equitable with investments on new projects to capture and clean water and improve open space resources and good quality jobs for all the communities in Los Angeles um, to ensure that our communities are protected in the oncoming drought and climate change and to increase resources for um, much needed resources in our county. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jill, let's prepare then to vote on this item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. And okay. that was as amended. Let's uh, recess the regular and move into the special. Bloom and Fibana Buscana, Cedillo, Englander, Harris Dawson, Weezer, Caress, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Rue, Wesson, 11 members present, Mr. President. Okay, Ms. Ramirez, we're in the special agenda, Mr. Spindler. And item 160 is an item for which a public hearing has not been held. 10 votes are required for consideration. Mr. Uh, Spindler, do not disrupt this meeting again, or I will ask you to go join Mr. Herman. Yes, Ms. Ramirez. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm opposed to these um, renaming uh, Laurel Canyon Boulevard and Rockdale Trail as uh, Love Street. I would prefer to name it Ice, Ice, Ice. We love you and full deportation at full throttle. No wetbacks, no gangbangers. Ice Street, Ice Street. No, we you're not love on you. topic. You're not on topic. Okay, Mr. Spindler, come on. This is on item 160. Please stay on topic. All right. Here's my legal brief. So in a special meeting such as this, when somebody's kicked out of the general, they're allowed admission to the special. You're off topic. Brown Act. You're off topic, Mr. Spindler. You want to speak on this item or sit down? I don't love this idea of naming Love Street on my Rothdale Trail. When I go to the bar off a of tavern, tavern trail, we party up on Rothdale Trail. I used to own a house up there. What kind of fucking street are you going to call Love Street? What's next? Butt fuck street? What's next? Love shit street? Love street for what? What are we going to name it after? It's a stupid fucking name. It's one of these mimby mamby PC bullshit things that's got nothing to do with Laurel Canyon. Nothing to do. No, it's okay, a fucking disgrace. thank you. Disgrace. Your time is up. Okay, now uh, let's prepare. Mr. Mr. Uh, Spindler, you're disrupting the meeting. Please take a seat. Please take a seat. Sergeants, sergeants, please show Mr. Spindler his seat. He just has to sit down. Mr. Spindler, you're still disrupting the meeting. Please sit down. Let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. And, and Mr. that's Pres forthwith. Correct. So, so if we could adjourn the special return to the regular. Okay, so we already, uh, are there any other general public comment where your name was not called? 
You sit down, Mr. Spindler. Your name was called. You know it. You two over here, please come down and identify yourself. Sergeant, show Mr. Spindler a seat. No, be quiet, Mr. Spindler. We have another gentleman talking. Identify yourself, sir. Uh, good morning, Charles Porter. I work with uh, United Coalition East, and I, I wanted to speak on items uh, 70 and 71. Yeah. Why don't you all, what we hold this time? All we have now is a general public, public, public comment, so you can speak on that. That's fine. Go uh, ahead. Yes, I work for a drug prevention program in Skid Row, United Coalition East Prevention Project, and uh, item 70 and 71, they speak to a um, redevelopment project which is seeking um, uh, up to 19 additional alcohol uses. And we have a lot of concerns because it's in the Skid Row area and they asked for a master CUP, so they came before you seeking a PCN and approval. Um, and we just wanna, um, see how we can uh, make sure the community is aware of these uses because we're working to uh, develop Skid Row and uh, meet a vision that, that uh, addresses the existing population and doesn't look for alcohol fuel redevelopment. We want to protect the recovery community, but we also want opportunities to um, advise these uses. So a recommendation is that they put together some kind of advisory group that looks at these alcohol uses because it's one facility that will have up to 19 potential uses. And so we just wanted to speak uh, uh, our concerns on this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please identify yourself. Hi, my name is Adeline Bertha. I am also speaking on the same item. Um, as a community member of Skid Row, I have multiple concerns and I oppose this project. Our community needs more than bars and restaurants. Skid Row is a recovery community and more alcohol availability in the community would cause a negative impact. A lot of community members are unaware of this project and I speak on the behalf of those who care. Thank you. Identify yourself, Nick. Hi, my name is Shaheen and I live in County District, Council District 5. This is my first time doing public comment at LA City Hall and I'm here because I care about the influence of money in politics. As a former teacher, I can see how things have changed over the years as charter schools flood our elections with outside money. Our schools are increasingly policed and still sit firmly connected to the prison pipeline. I ask city council to please, when you come back from recess, finally do something about the influence of money in politics. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes public comment. That brings us where, Madam Clerk? Council has motions for posting a referral. They are posted, they are referred announcements members. Mr. Price, I know you have a big announcement. I do, Ms. President, I just wanna invite uh, neighbors and friends to come out to Expo Park tomorrow for our annual uh, holiday Fourth of July celebration. Uh, there are going to be uh, music uh, help uh, program by KGLH, uh, with a, a diverse lineup of uh, entertainment starting around noontime. There'll be food trucks. Uh, there'll be uh, carnival games. Uh, lots of fun. And at uh, about nine o'clock, there'll be a spectacular fireworks show. So we're just inviting um, neighbors and friends from all over to come out to the greatest fireworks show in Los Angeles at the Memorial Coliseum and Expo Park. All are welcome and it is free. See you there. Thank you. Mr. Blumenfield, announcements members. Yes, it's an announcement not to, agree, to disagree with my, my wonderful colleague, Mr. Price, but of course I have to uh, make a plug for the greatest fireworks display in the city of Los Angeles that will be in Warner Center Park in the West Valley, also free. Uh, we typically have almost 60,000 people converge on that park. It has uh, become known as the Blumenfield Fireworks Extravaganza. We will have uh, Jack Mack and the Heart Attack uh, and other live bands playing. Uh, and, and come early, reserve your spot, uh, picnic out. It's a wonderful event, as I'm sure is the one uh, at Expo Park as well. The Blumenfield Firework Extravaganza. Yes. All right, who can refuse that? Any other announcements? Uh, Mr. Bonin. Uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, for those who would like to enjoy the 4th of July uh, with a cool ocean breeze, um, uh, 
they can come uh, to the 11th district. Uh, there are two parades, uh, one in the morning in Westchester uh, and another one uh, in the afternoon at 2 p.m. in Pacific Palisades. Uh, there will also be a concert at uh, Pacific Palisades High School starting at 6 p.m. and a fireworks show uh, at 9 p.m. Uh, the county also does some sort of fireworks thing that we can see from our district, but we don't pay that much attention to it because it's county, not city. Okay, any other announcements? Then would all please rise for adjourning motions. All please rise. I'd like to recognize, I want, if I could get some silence. Shh, Mr. Rue. Thank you, Mr. President. I know you want to uh, co-author this adjourning motion. And today I'd like to adjourn this meeting in the honor of Diane Bokey. Diane was born in Jersey City on January 31st, 1945. She was a graduate of St. Mary's in Hoboken and Georgetown University. Diane moved to California with her first husband, George, but when George died in 1979, Diane moved to Los Angeles with her daughter, Jennifer. Rather than letting tragedy bring her down, Diane stepped up and quickly became involved in local issues, causes, and politics. It was working on a political campaign that Diane met the love of her life, Mike Bolke, who I personally know, and I know you personally know too, uh, Mr. President, from working with LA County Supervisor Yvonne Burke, where he served as assistant chief. Diane and Michael were married on July 7, 1984. Together they served the city, the county, and the people for decades, not just in politics, but through Diane's career as a licensed psychologist. She was dedicated to improving lives of her patients and we lost her loving spirit on June 18th, 2018. Diane was full of warmth and compassion. She leaves her husband, Michael, and her daughter, Jennifer, and countless friends who will miss her dearly. Thank you. Well said, uh, Mr. Mr. Rue. I know I spoke with Michael, and, and he indicated that he uh, did not know how he was going to go on, and, uh, and I He's been my friend forever, and I told him I, d I don't have an answer to give you. So uh, it all harkens back to people that you love, people that you care about. You need to let them know how you feel while you can say it and they can understand it. Mr. Harris Dawson. Much, Mr. Chair, and uh, Mr. Rue, with your permission, I would love to be added to that. Oh, if the city clerk would make that a three signature. Okay, with that said, uh, have a safe... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bonin. That's okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, two adjourning motions. One for uh, William, or Bill Roberts, as he was known, of Westchester. He died uh, June 20th after an eight-year battle with cancer. Uh, I have known him for uh, at least a decade, uh, and he his battle was so valiant and, and so uh, uh, without... Uh, 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 drama or public face that I actually did not know he had cancer for the past eight years. Uh, he was uh, an Air Force brat born in Libya, a uh, world traveler and a gourmet cook. Um, he loved foreign cultures and, and partying with his friends. He received a BA in cultural anthropology from CSU Dominguez Hills and a JD from Newport University. Uh, and he actually worked for the city attorney's office for 30 years. Uh, he had a private detective agency, uh, but he's most known by, by, by me and by people in Westchester for his active role in the Democratic Party. Uh, he was an officer in the Westchester Democratic Club for a very long time. He was named Democrat of the Year for his assembly district in 2014. Uh, friends are going to remember him as a smart, classy guy with a giant heart who was committed to social justice. He held uh, the holiday party for the Westchester Democratic Club at his home every year, and while everybody else was dressed in some variation in red and green, uh, he always wore a black tux every year. Um, he's survived by his wife Linda, his children Nathan Roberts and Brittany Brando, uh, his father Colonel Charles Roberts, and his brother uh, Charles Rob Roberts. Uh, I also want to adjourn in memory of Phyllis Massard Lindner of Santa Monica. Uh, Phyllis uh, uh, was married to Chuck Lindner, who's a, a defense attorney of some note in Los Angeles County, uh, and she also worked as a producer uh, for Bill Rosendahl's show uh, when he was a cable host uh, for about 20 years. Uh, Phyllis and, and Chuck were on their way up the I-5 about 10 or 11 days ago, and they were in a horrible car accident. 
Uh, Chuck sustained some injuries and survived. Uh, Phyllis uh, was killed. She was 68 years old. Uh, she was an incredibly uh, uh, witty and passionate woman who cared for her family and cared for others and cared deeply about uh, uh, current events and, and, and justice. Uh, she uh, was uh, buried last weekend. Uh, she leaves her husband, uh, Chuck, and uh, two sons, uh, Abe, who is also a lawyer, uh, and David, who is studying to be a lawyer and who worked uh, for uh, Bill Rosendahl for a time. Uh, may they both rest in peace. Thank you. Any other adjourning motions? Members, this uh, meeting is adjourned. Well, 99% of our clients are longshoremen, then the other 1% is everybody else. Isaac opened back in the late 70s. The business was began by my mother and my father over 40 years ago now. My father, he worked on the docks, he worked at the canneries, so did my mother. My father used to take food from the house first, and that's how it, it began. My mother's tacos, her burritos got more popular than anything else. All the recipes are because of my mother. She was the one that knew how to cook. That's why my father fell over her, because my mother knew how to cook. She taught us well how to do everything. There's five of us. I'm the baby of the family. I have two sons. One's 15, and then my other one's uh, 18. He, he's in college. He got a, a scholarship from mechanical engineering. That's the other reason why I come to work. It's madness at times. Even before we opened, they're already yanking on the door. If I didn't have my family with me here running the business, it would have been a lot harder on me. Our kitchen is small. It's like being on a ship. We're known for our carne asada, our green chili pork, which is a green burrito. That's what we're known for. We have another one called the Jones, which is uh, red beef. That started from a man that was a dock boss on the docks. We have so many clients that have been eating here for over 20, 30 years now, even, even 40 years where we know of what they want. Across the street, that is the PMA Training Center. We were here pretty much the same time they actually opened up. So it was just luck. It was, it was my mother's luck. There has been people that try to copy our food, but they just don't have it. Our real secret ingredients is our mother's love. It's like she's always overlooking